From New York City, the makers of Clipper Craft Clothes for Men and more than 1,200 leading retail stores from coast to coast present Sir Arthur Conan Doyle's immortal character, the world's most famous detective, Sherlock Holmes, starring John Stanley. <laughs> this week's story... The Adventure of the Hangman and the Book. Oh, it's rather chilly out here in the park, eh, Holmes? Good thing the gendarmes brought along torches. It's terribly dark. This way, Watson. Follow the inspector. There, Monsieur Holmes. Just before you. In the torchlight. Aha. Uh-huh. The dead body. Hung from the limb of the tree. And dancing grotesquely in the wind. <laughs> Not every man has the broad shoulders and slim, tapering waist of an athlete, but it's a fact that men who wear Clippercraft suits look like they do. That's the result of careful Clippercraft styling, of design that emphasizes good points and minimizes bad ones. You don't ordinarily find such styling in $45 suits, but a Clippercraft worsted suit at only $45 gives you styling plus expert workmanship and fine quality materials. It's the same with Clippercraft top coats at from 40 to 4750. Clippercraft clothes actually look like they cost much more, and they would except for the fact that over 1200 established independent local merchants pool their tremendous buying power to get them for you at such low prices. Compare Clippercraft clothes yourself. Put on a Clippercraft suit and a Clippercraft top coat and see how good you feel. Your friends will all say, "Gee, but you're looking swell." And you will be. Now, Dr. Watson, we we await our rendezvous with the adventure of the hangman and the book. It was at the turn of the century, Mr. Harris. The enormous pressure of work upon Holmes had become too much for him. He suggested we steal away to Paris for a week of relaxation. Holmes and I were in Paris at our hotel when this criminal began his operations. It was at the Bonton Bookstore, a world-famous Parisian shop uh, noted for its collection of rare works. In the cellar beneath the shop was a thin, drawn, nervous young chap, Albert the Clerk. He was poking about the bookshelves with with a candle in his hand. Then suddenly, he heard footsteps. He looked up, terribly frightened. Who is it? Who's going down? I am, Albert. Oh, Monsieur Bonton. Didn't I forbid you to come into the cellar? Yes, you did. I had to know the secret. I had to know what you kept down here. I ought to thrash you, snooping about when I forbade it. I told you I did not want anyone in this cellar. I won't allow my own wife. I won't allow the least down here. Let alone a miserable, sniveling clerk. How long have you been here? Just a few minutes. Long enough to look about, eh? To see what I keep here. No, no, I, I, I'm terribly sorry. My curiosity got the best of me. I'll never do it again. You... you won't punish me, Monsieur Bontemps? We shall see what I'll do about you, Albert. We shall see. Is the shop closed, Marcel? Yes, Alice, darling. Going out again for the evening? I am. You have left me here alone every night this week. Don't be tiresome. You know I'm bored to distraction when I'm home with you. Then I'll go out with you. I'll take you wherever you wish. Marcel, we've gone over this so many times. Help me find my J.D. rings like a deer, won't you? You're staying home tonight, Alice. Stop bowing me. Let me alone. I am so loathsome to you. Yes. Yes, you know you are. You never did attract me, you know that. I told you before I married you for prestige and financial purposes. You accepted that. Now you insist upon being as romantic as a schoolboy. Stop it. I don't want to hear that. I can't stand that. You insist upon forgetting that you are more than 20 years older than I am, Marcel. You refuse to face that. You're old and withered and repulsive. Albert, my clerk, is more appealing to you, isn't he? Oh, nonsense. Where did you get that notion? Don't lie to me. I've seen you together. 
After you thought I left the store, I saw you take him upstairs to the apartment. Just to chat. Oh, really? Get out of my way, Marcel. I'm late. Go downstairs to the cellar. To whatever fantastic secret down there intrigues you so. If you go out again tonight, Alice, I'll put an end to it. I won't be disgraced and thrown aside this way. I have some pride, although you've used every device on earth to destroy it. Let's not quarrel, dearest. Here. Here's a kiss for you. Now, help me find my earrings, won't you? All right, Alice. Anything you say. Alice, ah. Alice, wait. Yes, Albert. I, I ran after you to ask if I'll see you tonight, Alice. I waited for you at the cafe last night, but you never came. I shan't see you anymore, Albert. Except at the shop, of course. On business. You what? Marcel knows about us. We must stop. But, uh, but you can't just dismiss it. Oh, yes, I can. I risk my job because of you. I risk Marcel dragging me to court, possibly putting a knife into me. We've had some rather pleasant times together, Albert. Now suppose we forget them. You're capable of that. Oh. You're going out with another man, aren't you? That does not concern you. I... Let go of my cape. <sighs> go back to the store. Marcel will be upset. Do you think you'll ever come to the end of it, Alice? Do you think you can go on forever like this? Albert, call me a carriage like an angel. You wouldn't be very attractive to other men, Alice. Lying in the morgue with your neck broken. Well, there, that's impetuous. That's very, very foolish. Go on, sweet. Call me a carriage. Who is there? I saw you behind that tree. I know you've been following me through this park. If you don't stop, I shall call a gendarme. I said, I know you are behind that tree. I can see your silhouette. Oh, so you will show me who you are. I might have known it would be you. What are you doing with that rope? You, you, you've made a hangman's noose of it. You, oh, let go of it. My throat. My God. We of the Sûreté, the French police, we are delighted to have you with us in Paris, Mr. Holmes. Thank you, Inspector. Uh, your accommodations here at the hotel are satisfactory? Quite. We're very comfortable, Inspector. Enjoying our visit immensely. Uh, superb, Dr. Watson. Uh, I am happy you have relaxed, Mr. Holmes, because, a thousand apologies, uh, the relaxation is over. Precisely what do you mean, Inspector? Uh, just a few moments ago, a gendarme discovered the body of a woman hanging in the Tuileries. She had been hung to a tree by a rope. <laughs> Routine police matter. Uh, ordinarily, Monsieur Holmes, yes. However, the case is most extraordinary. The woman was the wife of Marcel Bautin, the distinguished owner of the Bautin bookshop. Really? I know Marcel. Remarkable shop, one of the best. Marcel and I correspond frequently. Uh, Monsieur Holmes, um, the, the journalist will create a great crisis over the death of Madame Bautin. Uh, I must find the killer immediately. I need your help, monsieur. Have you questioned Marcel, her husband? Well, as best we could. He is grief-stricken. Where's the body? Well, I have closed the Tuileries, Dr. Watson. I have ordered that the body be left uh, hanging from the limb, exactly as it was found. Uh, it awaits uh, your arrival, Monsieur Holmes. Very wise, Inspector. Oh, then... You, you you will help us move toward the solution? I will arrive at the solution, my dear inspector. Watson, a cab to the Tuileries. Oh, it's rather chilly out here in the park, eh, Holmes? Glad the gendarmes brought torches, too. It's terribly dark. Yes. Uh, this way, Monsieur Holmes. Uh, you may see the guard we have stationed about that huge tree. Yes. And there... In the torchlight? Aha. Uh -huh. Swaying from the limb of the tree, the body of Ali Sponton. Horrifying sight. Let's have a closer look, shall we? 
Inspector, has Marcel, this dead woman's husband, any notion as to how this occurred? Oh, he... He is too ill. He is prostrate. It will be a few days before we can question him thoroughly. Uh Uh-huh. What is it, Holmes? What do you see? I see, my dear Watson, that I must pay a visit to Monsieur Charles Guillaume, the eminent French publisher. Yes, sir. What on earth does he have to do with this grisly crime? More than he would imagine. In the obscure records of that publisher, there's a forgotten entry which contains a clue as to who is responsible for this homicide. That entry speaks the name of the criminal just as if this dead body before us were whispering it too. Whispering the killer's name as it executes a macabre dance in the moonlight. It's pleasant to shop in your local Clippercraft store wherever you live because your Clippercraft merchant is an established, substantial hometown businessman who is anxious to win and keep your friendship. To please you and give you more value for your money, he has joined with over 1,200 outstanding merchants in a vast pool of buying power to make Clippercraft values possible. Clippercraft genuine worsted suits for $45 and Clippercraft top coats for $40 to $47.50 would not otherwise be possible. For Clippercraft quality is the traditional quality of New England, the same careful craftsmanship that built the famous Yankee Clippers, from which Clippercraft clothes take their name. You can trust Clippercraft clothes, and you can trust the men who sell them. That's why men who know insist on Clippercraft clothes bearing the Clippercraft label. So be sure to visit the Clippercraft store in your city. These leading stores in the metropolitan area are proud to add their names to Clippercraft in your suits and top coats. In Manhattan, John Wanamaker Men's Stores, Broadway at 8th and 67 Liberty Street. Saks 34th, Broadway at 34th. In Brooklyn, Abraham and Strauss. In Newark, New Jersey, Boulevard Men's Shop, Kresge, Newark. And in Jamaica, the B&B Clothes Shop, 16408 Jamaica Avenue. Now, Dr. Watson, Dr. Watson, shall we return to the adventure of the hangman and the book? Well, Mr. Harris, after Holmes examined the body of Elise Bonton in the Tuileries, he noticed a small detail he would not disclose. Next morning, he dashed to the offices of Monsieur Guillaume, the publisher. He returned with a Cheshire Cat's grin that indicated he was close to his prey. Then some time later, we visited Monsieur Bonton at his bookshop. The shop was dismal, dilapidated. Funereal. <laughs> Indeed, a frightening place. Monsieur Bonton came to us. Monsieur Holmes, I am honored. I hardly expected to see you on this trip, Marcel. Uh, you know Dr. Watson? You have mentioned him to me frequently. I'm delighted. How do you do? Know? You have heard of my tragedy? Yes, Marcel. Could you recount what occurred the evening of your wife's demise? She left me here to visit someone. Seemed untroubled, so I allowed her to leave and did not escort her to where she was going. Evidently, on her way home late that night, she chose to walk through the park, the Tuileries, alone. I would say she was attacked by a night prowler. She resisted him, and he did away with her. I was awakened by a gendarme who brought the terrible news. You have a theory, perhaps, Monsieur Holmes? Perhaps. I see you still have a magnificent collection of books. Oui, certainement. Is this your entire stock here in the shop? Uh, yes. Our apartment is upstairs, our books here. And below the shop? The cellar is locked, Monsieur Holmes. We have not been to the cellar in many years. Anyone work for you here, Monsieur Bonton? I employ a clerk, Albert. Where is he? Now, that is a problem. He did not report for work these past two days. Were your relations with Albert on a pleasant basis? Not entirely. How long has he been in your employ, sir? Oh, approximately a month. What trouble have you had? I do not like to place the young boy in a bad light, but uh, I have reason to believe he was more than fond of my wife, Ali. I see. A chat with Albert, then, might be very enlightening. Uh, please, Monsieur Holmes, I am not accusing the poor clerk. You have his address? 27 Rue Cerise. Albert Julio. Come, Watson. Uh, to talk with the boy? Yes. Perhaps this romantic young clerk, in his leisure moments, is a hangman. Well, Holmes, what's our next step? 
His landlady said the clerk out there hasn't been home for a few days. We shall return to the Bonton bookshop, Watson. Yes, we, we, we've been there. Oh, we shall return much later this evening. Midnight, I should say. When the owner has left, we shall again visit the mysterious bookshop. But, Holmes, you looked at... There is one spot we did not see. By far the most interesting, too. Uh, what spot is that? When I inquired about it, Bonton turned white. He trembled. What spot, Holmes? The cellar, Watson. We shall pay a midnight visit to the cellar. The door to Bontemps' cellar, Holmes. It will be locked, of course. That is why I brought a few instruments with me, Watson, to force the lock. Be childishly simple for me. I've made an extensive study of continental locks. Well, here we are. Now... Quietly, Watson. I shall work at the cellar door. You keep an eye out. Yes, that's sure. Shouldn't take but a moment. See anyone? Hear anyone? No. All clear. Go on. Simple lock. Just another moment. I hear someone, Holmes, coming down the street. I must finish. Hurry, Holmes, you'll be seen. One, one more second. There we are. Good. Quickly, the door. Yes. Follow me. Be careful. Rickety wooden steps. Uh, right, right, oh. Match, Watson, light the candle we brought. Yes, certainly. Holmes, what do you expect to find down here? Good Lord, Holmes. Never seen so foul and musty a place. You see the rats? The answer is here, Watson. The answer must be here. Yes, but what sort of shocking secret lies in this cellar? I'm looking for it. Looking for it. No, what? No, no, Listen. No, no. Someone's no, down no, here. That direction, Watson. Game, Left. Mama. Bring the candle. I, I am not afraid of the dark, Mama. But why is it dark at night? Tell me, why it is so dark at night, Mama? It's the clerk, Albert. I know him from his landlady's description. He's been tied up, Holmes. Look, he's bound to that pillar there. Yes, so he has, and apparently he's gone insane. Yes, by Jove, yes, look over his head. Isn't that a form of ancient torture? It is. The water method. Accomplished in this case with a large pitcher and a funnel, which is replenished now and then by his captor. Albert was bound to that pillar, but a steady drip of water strikes his head and he's gone mad. Tortured also by the darkness, by hunger and thirst, and the huge rats against which he's been defenseless. And time, Watson. Yes, of course. <sighs> Just one minute. The here. water, the water. There we are. <laughs> the water doesn't stop, you see. Only your mind stops. Rats are cruel animals. Perhaps not as cruel as men. <laughs> they enjoy human. Flesh. <laughs> it must be rushed to a hospital. Maybe years before his sanity is restored, if ever. The water is a colorless compound of hydrogen and oxygen. It is very helpful to man. It is beautiful. In the form of mighty oceans, lakes, and rushing rivers, it has many uses. All of them essential to life. <laughs> Where are you going, Holmes? What are you looking for? Ah, there we are. This shelf. What is it? A book faded to illegibility in parts. Very dusty. Uh, a book? The book, Watson. Though not outstanding in this surprising collection, I see. <laughs> you mean you originally stole into the cellar simply to find that book? Yes. Now we must find Marcel Bonton immediately. Oh. I will spare you the effort, Monsieur Holmes. Not very hospitable of you, Marcel, to greet us with a pistol. I'm familiar with your reputation, monsieur. I realized you would become suspicious, so I've been waiting for you with this pistol, which I shall use. You have come to put more water in the picture of my head, monsieur Bontemps! Please, no more water! May I ask, monsieur Holmes, what book intrigues you so? This work in my hand is entitled Rare Techniques in Homicide. It includes an exact reproduction of a Persian manuscript written in the time of Darius I. The subject of it? Techniques of torture and murder used during the Peloponnesian Wars. Holmes, why that book? When I observed Marcel's wife hung to the limb of the tree, Watson, I noticed she'd been tied with a special knot. I recognized it immediately. It was the very peculiar knot for garroting described in the Persian manuscript. There was just one place on earth where that knot is described. In this book. I knew there were just two copies of this work left in the world. I see you have one at Baker Street, I dare say. Of course. I therefore asked Guillaume, the publisher, an expert bibliophile, where the other copy was. He told you I had it there, Monsieur Holmes? Yes, he did. Therefore, I paid you a visit to look for it. 
I found it, Monsieur Bonton. That, unfortunately, does not prove that I am police. Why not? Because Albert, my clerk, gibbering there in the corner, could have read it too. He has been to the cellar before. I found him here prior to the night of the murder. Yes, Marcel, when I saw the knot, I immediately realized the killer must either have been you or Albert, your clerk. But Albert could never have read this book and learned to tie the fatal knot. Why not? He was here. He had access to it. Observe the book, sir. It's faded to the point of being illegible. He still might have read it before it's faded. Could he? Call upon your excellent knowledge of printing, sir. Has it not been at least a year since this type was legible? Look at the pile of dust accumulated upon this book. Has it not been at least a year since the book was touched at all? And did you not say to me yourself that you've employed Albert for only a month? Remarkable, huh? Marcel, you executed the contents of the book to the letter. The book relates that the ancient punishment for adultery was physical death for the wife. So you murdered Alice. And the punishment for the lover was more subtle. It was mental death. Torture to the point of insanity. So you punched upon Albert, tied him to that post in this cellar, and arranged your diabolical water pitcher. Yes, you've been deeply affected by this amazing collection of books. You see before you, gentlemen, the great secret of my cellar, which I've concealed all these years. Every book on the subject of crime ever written. I noticed you've the secret records of Caligula, for Camada during the Inquisition, the bloodstained memoirs of the Borgia. This was my real world down here, the world upstairs. I shot my wife. I was unhappy there. This began as a hobby, an intellectual pursuit, but then I grew to absorb it, to revel in it. Yes, I'd say you'd become intoxicated with crime. Time and again I was tempted to try committing a crime. It was always in the back of my mind. Then, when I found Dalif was making a puppet of me, when I found how she hated me, when I found out about her and Albert... You satisfied your desire and accomplished what you believed was justice by enacting what you've read in this strange book. And now I have a wonderful opportunity to know the satisfaction of committing a great crime, Monsieur Holmes, of killing both of you, and then leaving Albert as I planned to rot away in that corner of my cellar in living death. My own memoirs will be a glorious new addition to my collection. You do it, Holmes. He's going to pull that trigger. <laughs> my leg. Are you all right, Monsieur Holmes? Dr. Watson? Yes, Inspector. Oh, I am coming down. I have Bon Tom's gun here, Inspector. Oh, it was... It was very foresighted, Monsieur Holmes, to tell me to come by should you meet Bon Tom unexpectedly. Unexpectedly? My dear Inspector, it's obvious my reputation here on the continent is not what it is throughout the British Empire. You may inform your associates that there is nothing unexpected to... Monsieur Sherlock Holmes. Well, Dr. Watson, that was a very thrilling story indeed. Well, I'm delighted that you found the adventure so exciting, Mr. Harris. And I do believe that next week's story is just as gripping. It is called The Adventure of the East End Strangler. It concerns a city in terror. A scream in the night, a bit of blue thread, and an old lover. The makers of Clipper Craft clothes and more than 1,200 stores from coast to coast have brought you another in the new series of broadcasts featuring the world's most famous detective, Sherlock Holmes. Our stories are based upon the character Sherlock Holmes, created by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, and the program is produced and directed by Basil Lockwood. Sherlock Holmes is played by John Stanley, Dr. Watson by George Spelton. This week's story was written by Howard Merrill, with special music by Albert Berman. If you don't know your Clippercraft dealer, write Clippercraft, 200 Fifth Avenue, New York City. Money can help the fight against heart disease. Send a donation to your local Heart Association campaign or to the American Heart Association, Box 500, New York City. Be sure to listen next week to Sherlock Holmes in The Adventure of the East End Strangler. This is Cy Harris speaking for Clippercraft Clothes. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.